how to read a box plot. So just to review, this is a box plot. And just remember, all a box plot, or a box and whisker graph, as it's sometimes called, all it does is it takes all the data, and then it breaks it into four quarters, called quartiles. So here we have some test scores from a particular class. And when you first look at it, it looks like most of the kids got between an 80 and an 89. And that's not true at all. Remember that a box plot, it's taking all the data. Each one of these would represent 25%. From here to here is 25%. And from here to here is 25%. So it breaks all the data into four quarters. So just as many students got between a 77 and an 80 as did an 80 and 89. OK, let's see if we can answer some questions. What was the highest grade on the test? Well, the maximum value was a 100. Now remember that that doesn't mean that just one student got a 100. That could mean five, six, seven, eight students got 100s. Uh, what was the lowest score on the exam? Well, your minimum value would be here, and that's a 77. And again, that could be more than one student. What was the median score? Well, the median score, our median would be located, let me just clean this up a little bit. Our median would be right here, and the median would be an 89. So the middle score on the test was an 89. The middle 50% of the scores were between which two scores, the middle 50%. Well, remember, in a box and whisker, the box represents the middle 50%. So that would be between an 80 and a 94. The top 25% of the scores were between which two scores? The top 25%. Well, this is your top 25%, and it's between a 94 and a 100. The majority of the scores were above 85%. True or false? The majority of the scores were above 85%. Well, let's find 85%. Would you say the majority of the scores were above 85%? Well, 25% of the class scored here, 25% here, that's 50%. So it's over 50%. So yeah, you could say the majority of the scores were above an 85%. That's true. All right, let's look at another box plot. Here we have a box plot of some students' heights. So what is the median height of the students that were measured? What was the middle height? Well, that would be right here, and that would be 66 inches. What is the first quartile? The first quartile would be right here, and that would be 61 inches. Now remember, the first quartile, you have the first quartile here, the median here, and the third quartile here. And this gets its name first quartile because this is the first quarter of data. And this is the second quarter. This would be the third quarter of data. So how tall was the tallest child? Here's our maximum. And the maximum was 70 inches. What is the height of the smallest child? Well, there's our minimum value. And that would be 56 inches. OK. 50% of the students are taller than 68 inches. 50%. Let me just clean this up a little bit. So let's find 68 inches. Here's 68 inches. 50% of the class is taller than 68. Would you say that's true? Well, you've got 25% here. This is 25%. So 50% can't be taller than 68 inches. That's false. And again, you could pause these if you want to see if you're getting these right. Um, at least 75% of the students are taller than 60 inches. All right. So remember, this is 25. This is 25%. This is 25%. This is 25%. So at least 75% of the students are taller than 60 inches. Well, they're taller than 60 inches. They're taller than 60 inches. They're taller than 60 inches. Yeah, at least 75% are taller than 60 inches. That's true. 25% of the students are between 66 and 69 inches. 66 
and 69 inches. That is true. 25% are between 66 and 69. 50% of the students are between 61 and 66 inches. 61 and 66 inches. 61 and 66 inches. 50%. Well, that's false. It's only 25% of the students are that height. Okay, let's just do one more box plot. And again, you can pause these. You could actually pause this right now and try and answer these questions and then see if you get them right. So here we have number of eggs laid by different hens. Let's look at our first, and again, remember, when you first look at it, it looks like, wow, uh, a lot of hens laid between 18 and 24 eggs and only a few uh, laid 15 to 18 eggs. Well, that's not true at all. Remember, these all represent one-fourth of the data, or 25 percent. Okay, so the first question. 50 percent of the hens laid between, laid 18 eggs or more. 50 percent laid 18 eggs or more. Well, here's 18 eggs. Nope, only 25 percent laid 18 eggs or more. So that's false. 50 percent of the hens laid between 15 and 24. 50 percent laid between 15 and 24. That's true. 25 percent of the hens laid between 6 and 15 eggs. 25 percent laid between 6 and 15. Now that would be 15, 50 percent, so that's false. And the last question, 25 percent of the hens laid between 15 and 18 eggs. Well, that's true. So remember, a box plot takes all the data and it breaks it into quarters. And remember that the box represents the middle 50% of that data. So that's how you read a box plot.